go. <laughs> oh my God. Diablo and this Countach. Doors up on both of them because I'm assuming the air conditioning isn't working as they anticipated. Oh, and I recognize this guy still just making love to the car, which can you blame him? What's up everybody? My name is Elliot, but you can call me the Motory Notary. And remember, in order to know where you're going, you have to know where you've been. And in order to know where you've been, you have to go somewhere in the first place, which is exactly why I'm traveling to world famous car week in Monterey, California. That means we need to ditch this Prius, hop on a plane, pick up a way cooler car and go see if we can make all of our automotive fantasies come true out in sunny California. Let's hit the skies. And just like that, I am here in sunny California and look what I got for a rental car. A 2016 Tesla Model X, but not just any Model X. This is the P90D. Now, of course, I rented this car from Toro again, but this isn't going to be a full pitch because it's still not sponsored. Toro, if you want it to be sponsored, you know where to reach me. Now I rented this Tesla primarily because my wife Kenzie was supposed to be coming on this trip with me and she's always, always wanted one of these. So I figured why not use a service like Turo to rent one for a week and see if she would like living with it. But unfortunately our daughter got sick literally the night before we were supposed to leave. So she ended up staying home with our daughter while I got to still come out here and play with cars. So anyway, huge shout out to my wife Mackenzie for being so supporting and so loving to let me still come out here even though our daughter is sick. But now I have an important mission. I need to determine as a husband if my wife would like this car based on well, what I think. So let's take a quick look at this Tesla and then get it out on the street and see how it drives in an unfamiliar California area. So first and foremost, styling. You know, it's kind of like a big egg, partially aerodynamic, partially just Tesla design, obviously no grill. I think my wife would like it. Her car now is white, so I think she would like the white. So that's about it for styling. Doesn't really matter. You see these everywhere, but let's do the cool Tesla things now. And these are the things that she may or may not like, but I know that I like. So let's make this thing pop all the way open, all of the doors. Let's do it. So you're supposed to be able to just click. Oh, it's doing it. Look. Oh. How cool is that? Now, let's see if we can make the other side do it. Oh my gosh. Oh, that is so cool. And folks, it just doesn't get any cooler than that. No other SUV can do this and no other SUV flexes nearly as hard when you're parked. But with the Falcon doors open, you can see you can just kind of climb right on in and pretty much right on through. No, but uh, pretty good room back here. I'm not really a fan of this full third seat because the rear view mirror is tiny up there and your view is pretty much just this headrest the whole way. But regardless, those Falcon doors, while my wife might like them because of the ease of getting our daughter Charlotte in and out of them, I like them because it looks so cool when you pull up to a spot. Let's climb inside the cockpit of the Tesla Model X. I'm leaving the doors up though, because people need to know. People on this random Santa Cruz street need to know. Come on. Aha, see it kind of opens the driver's door for you too. First of all though, let's close that driver's door. See, in Kansas, we have to rely on the wind to do that. In the Tesla, you just press a button. Pretty fancy. Let's do this. Let's hit the close all now. Uh, that is cool. And with them closed, you can see that each Falcon door has its own little skylight. Pretty darn neat. When you're just looking around in here, one thing that is distractingly interesting is the size of the windshield. I believe it's the single largest windshield on any regularly sold vehicle because it doesn't just stop here. If you look, it keeps going like all the way back. It's like a windshield and sunroof in one. It's crazy because even this rear view mirror is just kind of like tacked in to the center of the windshield. It's it's wild. Also, the, uh, the little sunshades, they're over here and look, they magnetize there. You can like flip that down. So it's still kind of like a normal sunshade just from the future. And I think my wife would really, really love the size of the infotainment and the clarity at which things are laid out here. And I can tell you from experience of driving it, it's actually really, really easy to use, very intuitive. The same dudes that designed the iPad designed this infotainment. So you can tell it's very, very easy to drive. Plus you see old people driving Teslas all the time, so they can't be that hard to figure out. Anyway, let's get this thing out on the road and do what electric cars do best, accelerate. Anyway, setting out in the Tesla now, since we're in Santa Cruz, I happen to know that the Countach rally that Tyler Hoover is on is coming through town here. So I'm gonna head down to the pier, see if I can meet up with Tyler and catch all these Countaches coming in because I believe this is the largest single assembly of Countaches that has happened in a very, very long time. And I think there's some pretty cool people on the rally. 
First and foremost, it is very weird if you've never driven an electric car, the lack of noise that it makes. Now, would this bother my wife? Absolutely not, because she'd be probably blasting music anyway. But another thing that's immediately apparent is I have this set to the maximum regenerative braking. So it's almost one pedal driving. When you let off the accelerator, you, I mean, it's like applying half brakes. It's, it's amazing. You really don't need to touch the brake on this car very often. I'm gonna punch it now. And while you won't hear an engine noise, you will hear all the stuff in this car shift back at once. So uh, here we go. And that was, that was 50 miles an hour in a heartbeat. <laughs> and also, my, I mean, my neck muscles with that acceleration happened. Oh, now, would my wife like that? Uh, I can tell you for a fact, she would have been very annoyed if she was a passenger and I just did that. So <laughs> I think that's a point for, I sure want one of these, honey. Don't you love it? It's fast. And believe me, these cars can induce motion sickness in people who are otherwise not susceptible to that. But that's so cool. But think about how cool that is. You're like, I own a car that could physically make you sick. That's how fast it is. It will make you ill. That, that's awesome. That's a bragging right to me. Now turn left onto Ocean Street. See, the nav voice sounds pretty friendly. So after my little highway drive here, we only have 25% battery. So a supercharger visit will be necessary here. Also, probably because I keep flooring it now everywhere. Turn. But how can you not? That's like this car's party trick. The doors and that. You gotta do both all the time. Which reminds me, I need to try to see if I can drive with the doors open on this thing. That's what a Lamborghini owner would do. I need to see if it's possible. Now supposedly because with the extra performance you also get extra range, I think this one can go up to 300 miles on a single charge, which is basically like a regular tank of gas in a pretty efficient car. So it's amazing that it's capable of doing that and still going pretty far. Although if I had to venture a guess, you probably can't go as far if you keep mashing the accelerator like that, but it's, it's really hard not to do. Now, when you're driving it, when the sun's coming in, that's kind of when this windshield deal has its drawbacks. This windshield seriously makes you feel like what I imagine somebody with a receding hairline feels like. It feels like sun's hitting you in a spot that it shouldn't be able to hit you. It's like too far back which is, like I said, it, it just makes you feel like a bald guy, which is pretty weird. Uh, never thought that I would drive a car that would make me feel like my hairline was marching back, but that's what the Model X windshield makes me feel like. So I've arrived at the Santa Cruz Pier where the Lamborghini Rally is just now arriving. First of all, look at this 63 Corvette behind me, but that's almost kind of whatever compared to this Lamborghini Diablo and this Countach. Doors up on both of them because I'm assuming the air conditioning isn't working as they anticipated. Let's go out there and see the rest of them and hopefully meet up with Tyler. Well, safe to say, I think I found him. Turns out this is John Tamarian's of We Are Curated. Balboni. Oh, Diablo GTR. That is incredible. I know it's a Countach rally, but wow. <laughs> a Red Bull, that's funny. And uh, I believe this is the one. Yep, recognize that plate. Oh, and I recognize this guy still just making love to the car, which can you blame him? <laughs> it's good, he's, he's still in love with it. Hello, how's it going? I understand you're one of the only people with working AC on this. Yes. R12. <laughs> Only one has gone on the flatbed. Uh, others have That's leaked. And, well, one, the Elmo 2 had some problems when it got here. Blew off from the But they're, they're working. Yeah, the cars work. They're That's doing what they're supposed to do. Absolutely astonishing. And your voice sounds like it's not working. Yeah, I, I yelled, drivers start your engines and haven't recovered since the walk is yeah, Understandable. Well, I'm going to keep looking at these cars and uh, That's it? Well, I guess we'll, do you want to come look at some cars with me? No. Well then, you're busy? I'm very busy. <laughs> Because, okay, you got to go back to doing that. <laughs> All right, you get back to it. I'll, uh, I'll probably see you here in a second. Mercedes from the 30s. This has to be worth a pretty penny. I can only imagine. Also, Valentino Balboni himself is here. He's signing the bonnet of this Diablo GTR right here. <laughs> there he is. 
Uh, all right. Well, kind of saw uh, all of the cars. Got to meet Valentino Balboni, which was really, really cool. I never really thought I'd ever get to meet him, but I'm super glad I did. That's part of the Monterey Car Week deal is you get to see these automotive people that you never would have dreamed of, but you know, you get to. Anyway, I think they're all heading out. Tyler, are you guys heading out? All right. Well, I'll <laughs> see you later. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> I had to put my mic back on because these cars are starting up and they're going to get loud. But one thing of note, Matt Farah's old 911 Safari is here. So check that out. Boy, howdy, it's getting loud. One more stab here. Ugh. Your destination is on the right. Countach Rally was really cool, but now it is time to put some electricity into this Tesla. And the best and fastest way to do that is a Tesla supercharging station. And this is the first time I've ever actually used one. I've driven Teslas, but I've never actually had to charge one. Here we are. <laughs> this Tesla supercharging station is in the parking lot of a Whole Foods. <laughs> How fitting is that? All right, everybody else is backed into a spot. Why don't I? I look like a noob. I'm pretty sure this car can do this for me. But here we are. Very cool, very cool. This is the charging port. Now that's open. Take this and then drag it over. Uh, I'm gonna have to back up a little bit. That's embarrassing. It like barely reaches. Great, all these other Tesla owners are looking at me like, geez, dude. That should be close enough. Now, match the shape, go. Okay, it made some sort of lock sound, and now that's blinking in blue. That's supercharging. Okay, it's charging at 323 miles per hour. And I don't know if you could hear it, this just made a fan kick on on this thing because it's really putting the watts in. That's pretty neat. Okay, so while it's charging, you can do all sorts of fun stuff. Like look, you hit entertainment and you can play like games. So your controller is the steering wheel. Time remaining, 40 minutes. And how convenient, I'm already at a Whole Foods, I can fulfill my full Tesla duties and go get like a bunch of organic soybeans and kale. Okay, all finished up at the supercharger. I got about 87% of charge. That's pretty good. So right now I'm on my way to go to the Airbnb that we have in Monterey. And now I can show you really what the Tesla is known for. And what my wife would really want this car for is kind of the self-driving capabilities that it has. So right now I'm in traffic. You can see I'm not touching anything. It is following and steering for me. So right now, stop and go traffic. This would be pretty darn annoying normally, but because I've got auto steer on and the adaptive cruise, it's just gonna keep following these group of cars while I can do whatever I want on this big infotainment screen and pretty much pay minimal attention. I didn't say no attention. I said minimal. So that's really what this car excels for. And this is definitely what my wife was wanting to experience the most because although I'm a massive car guy, she's really not into driving. If she didn't have to drive, she wouldn't. So the fact that this car can pretty much do it for you, especially in frustrating situations like this, that is a huge, huge selling point. And once we get on the highway, it'll kind of keep doing the same thing. I'll change lanes, it'll change lanes for me. And it's gonna make this hour and six minute drive seem like nothing. Meanwhile, Tyler just had to do this exact same thing, except in a 1980s Countach, which would be hot and very tiresome on your leg. Meanwhile, I'm just hanging out. This is the future of motoring. So let's get on the highway and get to Monterey and uh, well, I'm not gonna be driving, so I guess I'll see you when we get there. 
Okay, well, the Tesla successfully transported me here to Monterey, California. This is the Airbnb right here, so I think I'm gonna wrap the video up. Overall, I think my wife would really, really love this Tesla. I know I do, obviously for different reasons. I like it because it's fast. She'd like it because she doesn't have to drive, but it's also got all the cool tech stuff that she would want too. Of course, I'm filming in the middle of the road. Classic YouTuber mistake and all the more reason to end the video here. So be on the lookout. I'm gonna to try to do daily videos while I'm here for Monterey Car Week. No promises, but I'm gonna do my darndest. So stay tuned to the channel. Follow me on Instagram if you don't already. I usually post little previews of everything and I'm gonna be doing a lot of Car Week stuff on there. Like me on Facebook, join my Facebook group. It's a great place to share memes and I'm almost always in there interacting in the comments. And other than that, be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe on this video. And I will see you guys possibly tomorrow. Now, right. when you're driving it in the sun, turn left onto Pine Street. God dang, it's a, apparently a tough street to do this on. There was seriously zero traffic until I started filming. One thing of note on here is first of all, you can tell exactly where I am, but second of all, there's something on the map called the mystery spot. Uh, can't tell you what that is. Ooh, it's got a little picture though. What does that do? Okay, oh, it's a place you can go, the mystery spot. It's got a ton of reviews, which is a complete mystery to me because I don't even know what it is, but I guess we'll never know. Let's get this thing out on the road. Mm -hmm.